Okay, so for everybody listening slash reading right now, I'm here with Stephen Bislev um, of Artifact, and uh, we're here today to talk about his upcoming Avatar project, which I'm very excited to talk about. Um, Stephen, how are you doing today? And uh, what should the people expect coming up soon? And then we can delve into some details. Sounds good. Yeah, no, I'm doing good. Well, it's going to be the next evolution of Avatar projects. We're trying to do everything in our power to take take the game into its next state of evolution in terms of one design, quality, utility. So we're super excited. We've been sort of working very hard the last three, four months on this project. It's super ambitious, which people will see when we release it. And yeah, excited to uh, tell you more of what we've been working on. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, we've seen a lot of attempts at avatar projects over the past few months, um, but I know that you guys are quite groundbreaking and you always do things differently. Um, how do you feel about the concept of the open metaverse um, using multiple platforms? How are you guys taking advantage of the current platforms that exist um, in this upcoming activation? Maybe just telling us like what you're using, et cetera. Yeah, so we, we see day by day the metaverse is evolving. Um, we're taking the crypto native approach. So we're working with platforms, games such as Sandbox, Decentraland, uh, to provide sort of day one utility for the avatars and also our other pro products that we release. Uh, and we actually in talks with big AAA game publishers to also uh, begin the conversations of moving into this NFT ownership reality. So uh, we're, we're right on the forefront of what's possible and we're trying to push the limits to create what we envision, uh, where these assets become interoperable in big IPs and games and can be used in different environments. Awesome, I love that. Um, so I know you guys have been uh, promoters, uh, partners uh, with these metaverses, especially the XR metaverses that currently exist, like Decentraland and Sandbox for quite some time. Um, for people who are watching or reading who might not be so familiar with the process, um, Walk us through how at least you guys take advantage of wearables, especially through Decentraland. I mean, I've been a big fan of the way that you guys activate in the wearable space, um, but I would love to hear your maybe uh, intro to people who might not be so familiar with uh, XR metaverses and uh, how they can you know, add value to, to an NFT purchase. For sure. So with us, how we approach this is we, we release and sell an NFT. Um, we treat NFTs as passports into experiences. So say I bought a cyber sneak NFT from Artifact, uh, we have different utilities that we add. So we're most known for allowing physical redemption of the sneakers. In addition to that, we also airdrop, which is the process of dropping in a free NFT to someone's wallet of Decentraland and Sandbox wearables. So they can express their identity and ownership of that NFT across different worlds. Uh, we're openly and actively exploring as many different um, possibilities and ecosystems as possible. We did something recently with Avatar, uh, an avatar company where you can create your own avatar and export it into different games like VR chat. So uh, as more and more publishers and ecosystems open up to the concept of NFT and ownership, uh, we wanna be there to allow our holders to showcase their identity or their product in as many different ways as they want. Absolutely. Um, and it really is self-expression and identity. I mean, with the, with the metaverse, a lovely conversation that I get to have um, quite often is how, you know, we're, we're moving past base identity. We can now be whoever and look, can any, and look however we would like, like um, um, genuinely. Genuine. Oh, I'm seeing, hopefully we're fine. I got a little feedback, but I think we're, yeah, we're good now. Um, so with this project coming up, um, what are you excited about in terms of people being able to express themselves differently through these really exciting characters? I'm sure there's gonna be some visuals in the, in the article so they can see what we're talking about. Yeah, definitely. So uh, we're huge fans of anime and we feel like anime spans this culture that we're in very heavily. Uh, before CryptoPunks or the current Avatar projects, uh, myself and the founders and loads of friends, we always had profile pictures of our favorite anime characters. So that was the general gist of why we chose to do an anime project. The second thing we've done is everything's 3D modeled. So we've done over 200 traits. We actually calculated we can generate over a billion unique uh, and designing 3D assets compared to 2D is a big task. And if you look at all the leaks we've revealed so far, uh, the quality is video game AAA studio. We assembled uh, Chris, who's our creative director, who comes from the video game and skin industry, assembled a team of veteran game designers. And we put a lot of work into polishing every single of the 200 traits to look good. 
another thing that people don't realize while looking at the avatars is doing 3d anime is very difficult a lot of companies fail uh, when you make an because anime is known for the 2d style and we really managed to perfect the image where it still looks like a 2d anime anime character but it's fully 3d and us having the 3d models for all the traits allows us to plug into metaverses and have the 3d models ready for use um so that's what we're really experimenting with and the main goal was to make the best visual looking avatar project that's on the market uh, we all love how they look and the community reception to the leaks has been insane. Um, so we're really excited about it. Absolutely. And I love the way you talk about the leaks because at least for me, one of the most exciting things about uh, your team as a company is the way that you guys advertise by integrating, you know, metaverse fixtures and bringing them into the real world through the power of AR. So I did yeah. see your most recent Instagram post and some of these recent teasers, uh, again, using the AR filters in like real situations. I would love to hear from uh, your perspective, how that idea came about and uh, how that's been so effective for you guys as a brand, for some people who might not be aware. For sure. So Benoit, who, who's the other co-founder of Artback, comes from the gaming and he's been very deep in tech. So has Chris in terms of AR and uh, LiDAR and new technologies that are becoming sort of mainstream. Uh, and for us, we've always been since inception, big believers in AR as a technology, especially with the Snapchat lenses that are coming out, Apple's patents. And we believe that it will take one big giant like Apple to mainstreamify the technology. So right now, how we see it is uh, coming from the sneak industry myself, sneakers have become tradable assets, similar to why we do NFT sneakers, because the whole process can be simplified. Um, is people buy sneakers, take a picture to post on their Instagram or social to show that they have that item and then they can flip it and sell it. So we allow that same function. So if you buy one of our NFTs, you don't want the physical item for some reason, you can still create content using AR. Uh, we've partnered with Snapchat to allow people to have these experiences. So when our new website comes out, um, it'll be clear that owners of the NFTs can access exclusive AR filters to showcase and create content, uh, which is another form of self-expression. So we're big believers in AR. And right now we're filming a vision project, which should be coming out by the end of the year, which is our vision of what the future of NFTs AR is going to look like. So that's a really big project to keep an eye out for. Absolutely. That sounds amazing. And that does definitely lead to some of the other questions that I have. Um, but before, before we get into the future of AR and the future of the metaverse, um, I would love to talk again about this, this project and uh, how you guys are playing with identity. Because, you, you know, you were mentioning the power of these AR filters and how we can use them in the real world. Um, but I also do think as we bring this, um, as we create the metaverse, you know, through AR mm. and virtually, um, people really do start using um, wearables and especially avatar projects as their identity. Um, so do you see this upcoming project? Like, do you see people buying these as their, not just their PFP, but as their new identity? Um, exactly. How do you see the future of that uh, progressing? So that's why we went for the, the avatar project is because we've seen people, how they create communities and we experienced it ourselves. When we started the company, we bought punks and we were welcomed into the punk community, which is an amazing community. And uh, we really like the concept of people using their punks as identifiers, right? Um, so that was the why we went for Avatar. Uh, I'm trying to say as much as I can without leaking. Uh, just right. so you know, right. like 10% of the information is public and we've got a lot cooking up. But our, our goal is for people to use these avatars as their identity. The brand we've created that's releasing this project is its storyline is set in this whole concept of identity and what the future of identity could look like. Um, and we expect with the utility that we're planning to integrate in as many virtual worlds, also provide the 3D models for our users to download, uh, rig into games or mod into games, and also VTubing. Uh, the models eventually will be rigged so people can use these avatars to VTube and create their own content or Twitch streams uh, using their identity. So we think that's a big part. We're also trying a lot of innovative mechanics in terms of the smart contract and functionalities. Um, and yeah, we've got pretty wild drop planned in terms of the whole experience has been polished. Uh, the website is full web three with 3D assets and we've got an amazing storyline and artists who are supporting the project. Um, we're super excited. 
awesome. No, it's funny because, uh, you know, I actually had a call with Whale Shark this morning and he definitely does the V2ing, you know, he has his whole avatar and it's amazing to see like what that stage of the future is going to look like. So I'm really excited to see that and like the newest level of unlockable content. Um, I also just before, I, I do want to talk about unlockable content for a moment because I think that's quite important. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I would also love to talk about just on, on the idea of like this identity. Um, I, I don't want to say identity crisis, it's almost the opposite. Um, but you know, you guys have worked, I'd say, when I say that you guys are community insiders, I think that's almost an, over, uh, an understatement because, you know, we, you are the community and this community you built is the DeFi and the crypto community. Um, and it's it's one and the same, at least from my perspective. And I think a big way that you guys did that is creating community around um, successful projects like your partnership with the Punks, um, your partnership with Apes, etc. cetera. Um, so mm -hmm. I would love to hear from your perspective um, how um, those kinds of conversations came about and how that helped dictate um, this very identity-driven um, Avatar project. Yeah, so it comes down to the nature of our brand. We're a creator-led brand, a community-led brand, an open source brand. So the way we approach things is for and by the community. Uh, an example of this is for the Avatar pre-sale, we're dropping 20,000. So we made 10,000 exclusively available to our NFT holders. So if you own an artifact NFT, you can mint up to three uh for 0 0.05 ETH, which is 150 dollars and what that caused is over 14 million in secondary sales and our floor price went from i think one ETH to seven ETH or eight ETH now so we're generating a lot of wealth for our community so we always put them first and in regards to partnerships uh we've been contacted by literally every brand uh from brands that we aspire to be like or wanted to work with and um, we have a very strict approach. We one check if they're native to our community or represent who we are as creators. Two, that we have the creative freedom and control and that we don't have to go through marketing departments. And third, if we can put our brains together, can we do something that we couldn't do individually? No, so why we focus on the crypto community is we believe it's a very powerful community. It's a small group of people that together can achieve big things and they all are under the same mentality of building this open metaverse and the only way we can achieve such a concept like this is together so we find it better to collaborate internally within the community and pick exclusive or brands that we admire and we think that we can do something big for the community to collaborate collaborate with um, so that's sort of our analogy and how we approach the market excellent excellent absolutely no, that's uh, I love the way you, you guys go about it, especially in terms of community engagement. Um, and I think that a big part of that community engagement is you constantly provide more value than people could ask for or think of um, by continuously uh, elevating the level of un unlockable content that you guys include um, with your NFTs. Um, so I think that's a big conversation. And I'd love to uh, talk about like, as, as you know, you create long-term roadmaps um, to facilitate, you know, integrating games like Sandbox, et cetera. Um, and I would love to hear your thoughts on um, how other, maybe other projects or your project um, perpetuate this, this idea of adding um, immense value and especially the idea of uh, being accessible across multiple metaverses, hopefully with the um, end goal one day uh, to have a, an open metaverse or, or an actual metaverse <laughs> where we can uh, be interoperable. And I mean, that would be the goal, but I would love to hear your thoughts on, on that uh, process and timeline. Yeah, it links back to what I said before is we treat NFTs like passports or like games. Uh, a game is released and it's constantly updated and refined to fit the needs of the consumers or the, we call them collectors uh, specifically and collectors are people who invest in our products who believe and push our ecosystem forward so we feel obliged to provide value in return right uh, we're not in it just to money grab people and disappear right so we do that through airdrops that's one system which is providing free wearables and different metaverses that relate to the item that they have. In addition, we're most known for forging, which is our process of using the NFT to unlock a physical item. We've built our own internal team to create highly customized full merch and we have our own sneaker department. Uh, sneakers is a very hard industry for independent brands to get into just because it's high overhead costs to get set up and we want to democratize that to creators uh, we do a lot of collaborations with creators and split revenue 50 50 on big collaborations so for us it's just always reviewing what we've released we're very serious about scarcity we don't over distribute 
And once we release something, we generally won't release it again. And if we do, it will be a variation. So it keeps that collectability because we've seen in the traditional world, brands like Supreme losing their momentum and collectability because they overproduce and wash out uh, cultural, culturally relevant items. Um, so it's that mix of scarcity and utility. Uh, our goal is to keep providing utility every year to every project we've ever done. And for example, when we did the Ferro shoe redemption and the Je uh, Jeff Staple, anyone who took part in our forge process to redeem a physical sneaker, we gifted them another NFT. So it was the Ferro Super Collector and the Jeff Staple OG Pigeon. And they are now selling at 7 ETH. So we're basically airdropping NFTs worth 7 ETH. And we've seen a lot of people generate wealth. And that's what really keeps us going is we believe this technology is here for the creators to compensate creators. And the royalty part is very interesting. So we like to reinvest a lot of our capital into building these ecosystems and yeah, push the industry forward really. Absolutely. And you guys do more than share the wealth. I mean, it's constantly providing value and innovating in ways that you can provide value, which I think is really important in this space um, where, like you said, we do see a lot of cash grabs and people just trying to enter uh, for the sake of it. And uh, I do, I, I put you on the short list of brands, I think that are quite, uh, you know, integrity based where you won't necessarily just do a project because it comes yeah. across your desk and that it sounds cool. <laughs> it has to be. We love saying no. That, that's sort of become our brand DNA that we're just, we do what we want and it frustrates a lot of brands and we've we've had calls where people are just snooping for information or how to get in and why why this space is so special is it's so community based and this community understand what's genuine and what's not and is very, very openly criticized projects that come into the space with wrong intentions so um that's the main thing i think is the, the community the best thing about the space is that it's open source and then sometimes depending who you are you know if you have something <laughs> to hide, the worst thing about the space is that it's open source you know all the other <laughs> it's out there one way or another <laughs> you get somebody dissecting your smart contract you're gonna know <laughs> every little detail so absolutely um maybe maybe on that point that might be interesting because i do want to kind of uh, guide this i don't want to keep you forever but um i do want to guide this conversation just towards then towards the idea of the future since you have this upcoming um project coming out um but i do uh love the idea I don't remember what I was about to say. Let's talk about the future. <laughs> I feel like that's a better one. Um, so in terms of taking this model and bringing it into this next phase, like you were mentioning briefly, um, the idea of Google Glasses, the idea of you know Apple or one of these bigger companies coming in and creating a solution that will allow people to really view AR and metaverse activations um, more easily, I suppose. Um, how do you see the world changing and how do you guys see yourselves being a part of that? Um, maybe tying in this project if you'd like. Yeah, so I think... The future is very hard to predict. Like even now what happened with NFTs is quite hard to fathom and how quick it's moving. Um, and we believe now even NFTs who can create utility even just on the art form uh, works. What we believe in, in terms of where the future is going is the concept of ownership. Uh, right now people spend thousands on video game assets and they don't have any actual ownership. So we believe we'll reach a point in time where the consumers of these games will demand that they have digital ownership through the form of NFTs in their game. It could take three to five years because game publishers, they make a lot of money through their digital sales. So they don't really want to split that. Uh, but eventually I think the consumers will demand it. And we're moving into a future where people will have more digital assets than physical, we believe. And the mediums of expression like AR, um, we think we envision a future where everyone's walking around with AR glasses and plain outfits, but in AR, they're driving like a cyber Lamborghini in full artifact gear, right? Um, this sort of ready player one scenario is where we think the future is heading because the future is just a remix of the past and what we experience through pop and mass mainstream culture with films like ready player one is giving people the ideas of the future that they want to create. So we see it moving in that direction. Um, that's perfect. I mean, I, I had another question, but I, I do want to talk about that. I think the um, idea of imagination in this space is so underrated and so important. And a lot of the conversations I have with, you know, metaverse builders or people I would consider like um, really integral in the future of the metaverse um, often allude to sci-fi films and the past. Um, I know you guys have a, a deep rooting in anime. 
Uh, but I would love to hear if there's any specific reference point that you guys come back to in terms of uh, the future. I know you mentioned Ready Player One, but uh, is there any is there any like personal reference point for your team uh, of the future that you would like to see? Not really. Again, it comes down to the three founders. We all have different films and animes that inspire us and that we sort of bring together like matrix evangelion uh we sort of combine everything and just create what we believe will fit in that future kind of creating what we want the future to be and why i think it's really amazing in the nft space is avatar projects have become people's identities a lot of people have gained confidence in not being their real self so someone could say, I'm a wizard, I'm the wizard of NFTs and put their punk, their picture as a punk and create their own storyline. Or oh, they're the or NFT wizard, who's to say they're not? Exactly. Right? <laughs> exactly. So we're seeing this sort of, like you said, adults are showing off their sort of childish side and creating these storylines and expressing themselves in new ways. And that's really deep rooted in our um avatar project we've created a bunch of traits that allow people to showcase different identities we've also made it non-gendered in the sense that you can choose to have a male or female body uh, we don't define the sex of the face uh, they all use the same base head but have features that can differentiate them so we're really trying to build something that's already set in the future and create the norms that we want to see and that's our role i feel like in this place is to innovate and test things out and sort of help guide our community and what we're building into the future we want to create. That's so excellent. Um, I think it's the idea of identity and being more transparent about who you really are. It's interesting because through an avatar project, it seems like you'd be concealing your identity, but often when we're put, when we have an avatar on, we're more authentically ourselves because we're not worried about being judged um, by others because, you know, we have this almost like a intermediary, this like wall being the avatar between like a, your, your physical self and your identity online, which I think is really exciting. Um, one of the last things I wanted to talk to you about, um, I did a thesis on decentralization as an, as an anthropological device. So like how it's affecting society. So this is like really one of my favorite conversations. Um, and one thing you said, I think related back to, to some of my research, um, how you said, uh, you know, basically in other words, but the future of all of this is really on chain and anything that's not on chain, like you were saying with video games um, is eventually going to fall off. So to me, that's all about uh, transparency and being open source as a company. So I would love to get a message from you, maybe just to other people who are operating the space about how important it is to facilitate and, and maybe even delay projects or work a little bit harder to make sure that they are on chain and to make sure that they are open source. Yeah, I feel like as there's more, more awareness into the space, the importance of on chain data uh, will be crucial because there's some projects, for example, where they're not fully on chain. So that means you could spend $100,000 on an NFT and then they go one day and change the image to uh, a meme frog, right? Um, so there's these sort of scenarios. I think a good example is uh, Chris, who's the other co-founder. He comes from the Steam industry uh, of game skins. And there was a scenario where someone account got locked by uh, steam and he had millions of dollars of skins in there and he committed suicide and it was a horrible thing and that just sort of shows how important it is for you to actually have true ownership where the item can't be changed or the company goes bust for example and the servers go offline and you lose everything uh, we also saw it with nifty gateway um, all the nfts that are held on the platform uh, in Nifty Gateway's wallet, right? So if the company say something bad happened, they lost the wallet, uh, your NFTs are gone. So ownership is super key. And that's why we're seeing such a boom. Uh, decentralization as well um, is key to the whole industry. And that's what we keep super native to our brand. Like all of our avatars are on chain. And it's kind of annoying because we had ideas of interoperability and evolutive items that where the images change, but we chose not to do that just to stay fully decentralized. Um, so I think as time progresses, there will be advancements in terms of how on chain and how much can be off chain because there's some limitations to having everything on chain. It's easier via uh, metadata, it always is, but I mean, it's less exactly. Yeah. I think it depends really on the company as well. Uh, 
that's interacting with the space and what their goals are. Um, because for some artists, maybe having their data on chain isn't the most crucial part of what they're building or the ecosystem. But yeah, no, the future is definitely on chain. People need to own what they pay for. And I feel like that's what's so revolutionary about the space, especially the royalties. Uh, having lifetime royalties is a concept familiar to many game skin designers, uh, but to the m majority of the world, they haven't experienced that. And especially artists, uh, it's groundbreaking to be able to profit off the work you've created after an event has happened that has caused your work to appreciate or your talent is acknowledged. So I think that's very crucial. It's one of the most incredible parts of the space. And I mean, it all boils down to the same, you know, don't trust, verify. If you can yeah. verify, it just makes, you know, if you're ever nervous about a transaction going through, you just check your ether scan. It's like, it's right there. Yeah. If you need a call. There's no customer support. You are the customer support. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge, I love this space. I've been around for a few years and, and, I, and I really love what you guys are doing. Um, I don't want to keep you for much longer because I know you have a million things going on, as do I, so I can only imagine what you have going on. Um, so, but just, just for the people who are reading or listening, um, it is also up to you when you would like us to post this, if there's anything specific that you want to mention. Uh, but where can people go? Um, where should they uh, check out this project if they're not already all sold out? <laughs> for sure, no, definitely follow our Twitter, which is RTFKT Studios. We post everything on Twitter first. And if you're super keen to learn more, join our Discord. Uh, we're actually posting an NFT Bible, which is an onboarding guide for how to operate in this new world and set up your MetaMask, prevent being scammed and how to purchase one of our drops. So join the Discord, follow us on Twitter. And you can also get me on Twitter, uh, Z-A-P-T-I-O, Zaptio. Uh, be happy to help.